Hi, I'm Pam with PJ's Glass Creations. Thanks for joining me today. Today we're going to learn how to make a poppy and a hyacinth. These particular ones are garden stakes. As you can see, they're very similar. So we'll be learning how to do these simultaneously. And it's part of a four part series in how to make all different flowers. There's also one on making a hibiscus, another one in making a daisy. And uh, you will learn how to make them eventually into garden stakes or you can put them into something really amazing. Let's get started. Hi, this is Pam with PJ's Glass Creations and today we'll be making a poppy and or a hibiscus flower. These are actually really pretty easy to make but they're a great addition to your garden, especially if you live where I live and it's 115 degrees out and flowers just don't like it here. So let's get busy. The first thing we're going to do is cut some strips of glass so that we can make them into squares. I am using for the hibiscus marigold yellow. There are many different yellows you can use. The marigold yellow is number 320. You can also choose to use a sunflower yellow, a canary yellow, and by the way, I am referring to bullseye glass because that's what I choose to use. You might use a system 96 glass. You might have another favorite color that you like to use. So to get started, I am going to cut some strips that are one and a quarter inches long. So here I have my strip and I'm just going to cut it into squares. Each flower takes five squares. So one square, two, three, four, and five. So here I have all of my squares for both my hibiscus and for my poppy. And I need to get it to be more of a circle, obviously. So the way I do this is to just use my nippers and I am doing this on a cookie sheet because glass tends to fly everywhere. And I make it more of a rounded shape. And if you look at the flowers, they have kind of an irregular organic edge to them. So this whole top edge here, I am going to just chew up with my grosing pliers. And if you look at your grosers, the one part is flat and the other part is rounded. I want this rounded part on the top for this. And I am just going to chew away the top part of my petal to give it a more flower look to it. So I'm going to do this to all the rest. So here, all of my flowers, actually all of my petals, have my irregular edge at the top, but down here, it's still pretty angular. So I'm going to take this to the grinder and round this off. I have finished grinding and you can see that one side of my petals have an irregular edge to make the edges of the petal look a little bit more roughly. And the other side, this is the part that'll be on the middle of the flower, is more rounded. And I did this to both my poppy petals and my hibiscus petals. And I'm going to build this on thin fire paper or papyrus paper. And to do this, I use some super glue. I have also used Elmer's School glue that works just as well. It just takes a little bit longer to set. And I arrange them as uh, side by side with the rounded sides touching and the irregular sides on the exterior. And I put just a couple of, if I can get it going, couple of dots of super glue or 
like I said, Elmer's glue. And I put this one on top just like that. The next petal, my super glue is just not cooperating, sorry, is going to be placed right here. And my final petal is going to be a little bit balanced, but my final petal goes like this. Now you may or may not end up with a little hole in the middle. I like to drill my holes after the fact. So I like my hole closed up as much as I can. The reason for that is if my hole is closed up, I can control the size of the hole for the stamens. And it's just a very tiny hole that I need to make. I'm gonna do the same thing for my poppy. Put them side by side. A little dot of glue on both. If I can get it to come out. And I'm gonna close up the hole on this one a little bit. And if you notice, on my hibiscus, the middle is red. So on this one, I'm using a red opal frit from Bullseye. And I'm also using a sifter because I want that powder to be on there. Uh, I don't want it blobbed on there. So I'm going to sift it so just the middle has a little bit of red. Now with frit, always remember that, especially the powdered frits, they come out looking a little bit less than you think you put on. So I would always add a little bit extra just to make sure you get that red, but not too much. And then for the uh, poppy, I'm using a black opal fine. You could also use a powder if you want, but I like a little texture on this one. And this one I'm not sifting because it's fine. And I'm using a spoon and I'm just going to very carefully put some in the middle here. You can move it around if you need to, or you can get it. I usually end up with some little bits of it on the petals and that's okay. It gives it kind of a poppy look, but I don't like too much on the edges. So sometimes I kind of push it in. I'm going to spray it with some hairspray. Just to hold it in place so I can get it to the kiln. And we are ready for firing. And now it's time to put them in the kiln. We'll do a tack fuse. And then we'll be ready for the next step. My poppy has been tack fused, so now it's all held together. Next step is to give it some shape. I'm using a Creative Paradise Mold GM48 for this. All I'm going to do is center this as well as my hibiscus flowers and slump them in the kiln. My hibiscus and my poppy are in the kiln, ready for a slump fuse so that they can get their floral shape. I've put a two millimeter drill bit. It's diamond coated on the end, so it will cut through glass or drill through glass. And I'm going to drill a small hole right in the middle of this poppy. I'll try to do it so you can see it. Now, when you're drilling glass, you always need to keep it wet to keep it lubricated. Otherwise the friction can cause it to crack. It heats up and it'll crack. I've known from experience. This is gonna be kind of noisy, so I won't say anything while I'm doing it.
you can see I have a hole in the middle so that I can put my stamens in. Time to do my hibiscus as well. The next step is to make the stamen for the flowers. So for this, I'm going to use some 20 gauge pre-tinned wire. And it needs to be pre-tinned because we are going to use solder to make the little balls for the stamen. So to do this, each flower will need three pieces of wire, each one about two and a half, two and three quarter inches. and I am using a paste flux you can use a liquid flux if you would like and to do this I'm going to dip the end of my wire in the flux and I'm going to hold it with my pliers because it gets kind of hot I got a little bit of solder on the end of my soldering iron. I'm going to knock it off with the end of my wire. And I'm going to dip my wire into that little dot and wait until it solidifies a bit. And there you can see I have the first part of my stamen. It's important that you work on a fire resistant surface. This is a ceiling tile. You can see it's had lots and lots of use. I've even used a torch on it, which is how it got so black, but it has never burned. Okay, one wire is done. I dipped both ends into the solder, sorry, into the flex. That one didn't make a big enough ball, so I'm going to try it again. Two of them done, one more to go. Now, if you don't have soldering equipment, Another way you can do this is get a little bead that'll fit on the end and just twist the wire. You put your wire through the bead and then twist the wire to hold it on. I used to do that until I discovered this other method. All right, so now all three of my wires have the balls on the end for the stamen. Let me get this out of the way so I can show you what to do next. Okay. Next, we're going to fold each stamen in half. And I'm going to use my pliers to help me close it up a bit. There's one. Two. You know, and if you really don't want to have stamen on your flower, if you want to skip this step, that's perfectly okay too. So all three wires are folded in half. And here's my uh, poppy that I put the hole in. I'm going to put all three of those wires through that little hole and kind of push them through. We're going to pull them back out later. So I have all three of them here. 
I'm going to cut another piece of wire and put it through all three of those wires. I'm gonna hold this together and twist this wire that I just threaded through. So now they're secure. I'm going to cut the excess off, push this back through. So you can see, here's my stamen all together here. We will separate those eventually and paint them with yellow nail polish. But for now, I'm going to use some E6000 glue, put a pretty generous daub of it on the back, and I'm going to let it dry. Once it's dry, we'll continue. See you in a bit. The glue on the back of my poppy has dried. I have a little bit of string that I can take off. So now my stamen are all secure. They're still bunched together though. I'm going to separate all my stamen. And I'm going to use yellow nail polish to color the ends yellow. Yellow is kind of a hard color to get to cover, especially this metal seems to take a couple of coats. Usually I do two or three coats. And there you have it. I'll do one more coat and my poppy will be done. You can do the same with the hyacinth. My poppy and my hibiscus are done. The stamens are nice and yellow. I've given them a second coat of paint, so they're ready to be put into something that's spectacular. Hopefully you liked this video and found it helpful. If you did, please click on the like button and subscribe to my channel. I have other videos, one on making daisies, another on making hyacinths, and soon I will have a video coming out on what to do with all these flowers now that you've made them. Thanks. Thanks for joining me.